I am a 3D artist and today I'm designing entirely new Minecraft bosses for biomes that don't have them yet because right now there's not a lot of them. But here's a catch, in 3 days a real mod developer is going to judge whatever I make from 1 to 10. Last time he told me to seek therapy so I really hope I can make a good impression this time. These are some of my favorites I've made yet so if you like what you see I'd appreciate if you subscribe. If you've played Minecraft you know it has a lot of biomes so to keep things simple the first biome I'm making a custom boss for is the forest biome which is one of the most common but where it gets complicated is that there's not just one forest biome, there's like 10 different options. Things like the dark forest or the birch forest, and even those have a bunch of their own variants. But the one I'm focusing on first is the flower forest. It's a rare biome with fewer trees than other biomes, but enough flowers that maybe even Instagrammers couldn't ruin it. On top of that, it generates an abnormally large amount of beehives, which is gonna be important later. If I'm gonna impress the mod developer, I need to make something that actually fits thematically with the biome it's made for. And that's where the Venus flytrap comes in. Venus flytraps are carnivorous plants that trap insects when at least two of the hairs in their mouth get triggered. But they don't just catch flies and small insects, they've even been known to catch bees. A Venus flytrap boss would make so much sense in this biome, so that's exactly what I made. I started by making the stem in the mouth and even added some 2D planes that will eventually be leaf arms. But now the natural question is, how will it move? Leaf legs. Well, this turned weird fast. I added 2D planes for the teeth and also some thorns along the stem. Finally, I started the process of texturing. I did the basic colors first, and then I used other textures as stencils to add some variation. It's looking pretty cool, but if I'm going to impress the mod developer, I need to decide not only how it looks, but also how it's going to work. The flytrap boss would spawn whenever a bee tries to pollinate a flytrap plant, which would spawn pretty rarely in the flower forest. As for how it attacks, just think of this, but poison. The boss would also heal itself by burrowing underground, forcing the player to dig it out. When it reaches half health, it sprouts legs and does all the same stuff whilst running around like a maniac. When it's finally defeated, it would drop thorns for these thorn bushes, which are basically cobwebs that cause damage, but only down to have a heart, which would make them very overpowered for farming. I'm really happy with how this one turned out, but I'm not looking forward to explaining the leaf legs to a professional mod developer. And real quickly guys, before I design probably the coolest thing I've made, this video is partnered with Core, so I want to tell you about them super quickly. Core is a free PC gaming platform where anyone can create and share their own games, either from scratch or using the thousands of pre-made assets they have available. You can download it from the Epic Games Store using the link below. The worst thing about making mods or games is how unintuitive it can be to learn, but a lot of the difficult stuff like coding and networking isn't required with Core. That being said, if you do like pain, you can still dive into the coding if that's what you want. On top of all that, Core offers a very competitive revenue share model. In a society where Roblox takes 75% and Fortnite takes 95%. Core really took one for the team, offering a 50-50 split and covers all fees and marketplace taxes. Many Core creators have been able to pay their bills and even quit their day jobs with the help of their perks program. So download Core and start making your game for free using the link below. Some of these videos are starting to get expensive, so big thank you to Core for supporting what I do. The next biome I wanted to do is the jungle biome. It's a lush environment that's usually hard to navigate because of the dense plant life and obstacles. It's also home to jungle temples and watermelon for some reason. For such a unique biome, I wanted to make a boss with unique challenges based on the landscape. Who built these temples? Who eats the watermelon? Lemurs. Lemurs are native to Madagascar, which I guess technically is more savanna, but there's jungles too. Lemurs themselves wouldn't be the boss, they'd be a new neutral mob that would spawn mostly in jungles and can climb walls and jump between them. For the jungle boss, I wanted to make the lemur king, but unlike most bosses, the lemur king wouldn't attack the player, instead it would run as fast as possible in the opposite direction while spawning endless hordes of angry lemurs to harass the player. This would definitely not be annoying at all, and I'm sure it will be lots of fun to deal with. When it's defeated, it would drop the jungle staff, which would allow players to stick to walls and propel them forward like the trident. This would let players jump between trees, and as a bonus, the staff would be able to call in angry lemurs to attack anything and everything. To start the lemur king design, I had to make the regular lemur first. I used the ocelot model as reference with a couple major differences like more joints on the limbs. This way it can stand upright without looking... ugh. Next I made a crown and a few more tweaks and with that the model is complete. For the texturing I referenced real lemurs while using stencil textures just like before. And finally the lemur king's design is done. It's a bit simpler than the flytrap but the next boss ended up blowing them both out of the water. But I'm still happy with how they turned out and I think it fits the jungle theme well. 
But unfortunately, the day of judgment was almost upon me. Very soon, a mod developer would be judging my work so far, so I needed the final boss to be a 10 out of 10. The next biome I wanted to do was a nether biome. The nether was completely revamped fairly recently, adding several unique biomes from the basalt deltas to the warp forest, so it would be cool to make a boss that incorporates some of these new elements. I wanted this one to be a true final boss, much stronger than all the other ones. The idea I had was the nether dragon, and it would only be available after defeating the regular ender dragon, so there's a lot to live up to. I started my design with the original ender dragon model, but with a number of key differences. For starters, the tail has a trident formation on it now, and there are three heads instead of one. A lot of the design will have to depend on the texturing, and this is where it really starts to shine. I started the texturing with a few main things in mind. This boss would basically be the ender dragon reanimated by pure rage, existing as an unstable collection of lava and netherrack, protected by netherite armor that heals it over time. The only way to stop it from healing would be to get it down to half health, at which point the armor would break, exposing more of the lava and netherrack. I started the texturing with the head and really did my best to make it fit the theme. For the mouth, I ended up going for this open furnace look when it's closed and this flowing lava interior when it's open. Next, I tackled the neck and tail pieces followed by the wings, which are netherite and lava. I got really into it and kept adding more and more layers of detail like more furnaces or scale patterns, even lava veins on the underside. And when I finally finished it, I couldn't wait to show it off. But unless I wanted this to all be for nothing, I had to justify why it would be so over powered. And this is what I came up with. The dragon would be extremely aggressive, plowing through blocks and leaving fire trails as well as endless fireballs from each head. When it's finally defeated, it would drop a heart of the nether, which can upgrade netherite tools and armor to the new best material in the game, the super netherite set. With this concept, time was finally up and it was time for my work to be judged. So I designed some bosses that I'm going to show you and you're going to love them. You're going to love every, every aspect of them, I think. Daniel, what did you do? Once it falls below half health, it sprouts legs. Oh my god. <laughs> For the design, I would definitely rate this probably like an 8 out of 10. I love the design. Oh, what's this over here? Ah, it bit me. Like, I don't know. It could be a fun experience. Uh, I would rate the complexity of this probably an 8 out of 10. I love that he has a little crown. Pretty cute. I would rate this one probably a 7 out of 10, just because I think having an endless horde of enemies constantly harassing you sounds really not fun to me. <laughs> probably like a 6 out of 10 on the complexity. It doesn't sound too hard. So this next one, it's called the Nether Dragon. Oh man, that is really something. Uh, I gotta say, 10 out of 10 on design, I love this dragon. The complexity is also a 10 out of 10 because there's a lot of things that would be completely custom here, but that is part of what makes it so cool. Dude, that's a big compliment, thank you. You're very welcome, I am so impressed by this. I actually am a little sad that I can't play with it. With that, I fulfilled my dream of impressing a mod developer. If you want to see more of those in 3D, give me one of these, and go check out Skylar's website, he made this video possible. And thanks again to Core for sponsoring, goodbye.